There's a big difference between fighting and disagreements, misunderstandings, miscommunications. All couples fight, therefore I have a free pass and I can take anything I'm feeling inside and I can dump it on my partner. I don't want to fight with you because I respect you. I want to talk things through with you. I want to seek to understand. My desire was to be connected to you and feel your intention, not my emotional reaction based on what it triggered. People deeply desire to be right. And so we create a cycle of wanting to fight with our partners so that we can feed our egos or put someone down. When we focus on the love of the connection, it's not about us winning. It's about love winning. Hey, Heart Leader community, this is Amber Mikesell, and I am so excited. Silence Your Inner Critic has a release date. We'll be hitting shelves March of 2025, and you have an opportunity to get on the wait list by clicking the link below. And when you do, you're going to immediately get a gift from me. It is the Silence Your Inner Critic Starter Kit, where you'll get 13 tips to get started on silencing your inner critic before the book hits the shelves. In our last podcast, we really focused on navigating through the importance of open and honest communication. But one of the things we talked about was how common it is in relationships, especially romantic connections, to say that relationships are work. We really are doing our best to begin to bring a new perspective to that and to say, what if relationships are exploration and play and connection and fun. How does that change things? And with that then comes the other saying that we hear, which is all couples fight. We'd really like to start to debunk that myth and share that not all couples fight. Yes, it happens, but do we all fight or have some of us discovered a way to navigate past or through, I think through is a better way to say it, navigate through fighting and build a connection using that open and honest communication that we talked about in our previous podcast to create that space of joy, even if we don't agree in, or we agree to disagree we're not attempting to force each other into one way of thinking, being, acting, any of these things. So is that possible? Definitely. 100% is possible, I feel. And that's because we've been experiencing it for 10 years. So there's a big difference between fighting and disagreements, misunderstandings, miscommunications. And so with us taking the time to really understand each other through the process, our styles of communication, our love languages, you know, all these things that help us truly represent who we are and who we are to each other can then help us l limit to, to where we go on that scale. And in addition, I feel like respect has a huge, huge part of it. I don't want to fight with you because I respect you. I, I want to talk things through with you. I want to seek to understand. I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. And I want you to give me the benefit of the doubt. And I desire us deeply to be able to trust in the love that we have to be first and foremost the priority so that anything we could potentially fight about would be not as important as the relationship that we hold together. Yes. And we know we're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. We have friends, Akshay and Melissa, yes. who are on the same desired path to show individuals that it is possible to be in a connected partnership and not have fighting be something that we fall back into on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I can speak for myself in previous relationships. It was very easy for me. I would go, well, all couples fight. Therefore I have a free pass. 
and I can take anything I'm feeling inside and I can dump it on my partner. And if they don't like it and they dump back on me, well, that's okay because all couples fight and that's just normal. And so we'll just keep dumping how we're feeling on each other with neither one of us stopping to take the time to truly receive how the other person's feeling, look at it from a different perspective and go, I can understand that. Now, how can I best respond with care, compassion, and understanding to not continue to fuel this into a fight? right? There's a different approach there. But using that all couples fight as a free pass is for me and for people that I know was so easy to do. And the moment we don't allow that to be a free pass anymore and we say, no, not all couples fight. All couples might disagree at points in their time together, especially the longer you're together. Like you're not carbon copies of each other. Mm -hmm. You're going to disagree about things. And it's actually healthy too because it helps you push each other in new and interesting and fun ways. But that's how we need to begin to look at it. Yes, absolutely. And when we look at things together from new and fun and interesting ways instead of it, oh, well, you're just challenging me. So I must challenge you back. We are in a battle now. Instead, it's like training ground for the soul, right? It becomes that fun little practice ground. Yeah, absolutely. And there's also, you know, for for me, I was taking it from the standpoint of, you know, I, I loathed confrontation. You know, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't want to be a part of it. And so I would use something like, you know, all couples fight as a reason to not get very far in a relationship because the moment something would come up in a way that would be somewhat of a fight. And then I'd be like, oh, well, it's just, it's just going to always be fighting. So I'm just not even, I'm going to stop this now. And so it's, you know, so there are multiple sides to this, you know, where it's like we, we give ourselves freedom to then fight because of it, or we shy away from it you know, something that could be really amazing with someone just because we're afraid of some, uh, you know, a disagreement leading to fights or, or further and further. So, you know, it's, um, that's why I was so happy that you know, in terms of how we approach it, that it's not about, you know, our disagreements, we actually take the time to talk through. We really, really seek to understand where the other person is coming from because, you know, we've we've taken the time to get to know each other. We understand, you know, where we're coming from. You know, what what is the frame of reference in which Amber or I where do where are we coming from and why are we coming from this standpoint? And so if you bring something up and it and I don't agree with it, then okay, this there's there's something for me to learn here. There's something for me to understand because I respect you, you know arguably more than anyone else on this planet right now. And, you know, I believe in you and I love you with every ounce of my soul. And so when you bring something up and I, and I may, whether I, it's a light disagreement, um, like maybe our choice of ice cream. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) Or it's something like fundamental. Then it's like, Whoa, okay. Oh, you know, there's even a, a podcast, you know, a couple months ago where we talked about something where we just, you know, I disagreed. Like we actually went into it with a disagreement and we talked about it and it was okay. It's like, it's so close, but there is a, there is a, there's a minute area that keeps it slightly different. Yes. But that's okay. And even if we hold that, that doesn't make either of us wrong and it doesn't make either of us right. And I think a lot of the fighting that ends up going on is that it fuels ego because people deeply desire to be right. And so we create a cycle of wanting to fight with our partners so that we can feed our egos or put someone down and lift ourselves up when we're not feeling well. Trust me, I've been there. Like it's, this is not, a, I'm not just casting a stone here. Like, you know, I've, I've felt all those feels and, and realized how much that is not who I am. Even though I, the cycles continued and continued and continued. 
And then you would hear like, you know, relationships where people are like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's good when we fight because it makes everything else better. And it's like, well, why not just stay in the better? Yes. And I can see that perspective too, because in previous relationships, as I was learning along my way, it was almost like a pressure valve when we fought because we didn't take the time to have that open, honest communication up to the point of fighting. Mm -hmm. Then you would get into a fight and you would say all of the things, not in the best way, but all of the things that you have been holding on to since the last fight. Mm -hmm. And it would all inevitably come flowing out. But again, not in a way that is conducive to connection, to kindness or care or respect of your partner. It was more so, I just need to unload all of this onto you because you've done all of this to me. And now you must know about it and you must pay. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was never intentional heading into it, but somehow it gets sparked. And the moment it gets sparked, it's almost as though something takes over mm -hmm. because you've had it bottled up for so long. And a little bit starts to come out and then all of a sudden you can't stop the, the pressure release and it all comes spewing out. But once it's all out, it feels so much better and things seem to get better, but the pattern hasn't changed. What happens is, okay, I'm better for now because I've said everything that I was holding on to, and you said everything you were holding on to, but now I heard everything that you didn't like about me and you heard everything I didn't like about you. And we just planted seeds again and we hold on to that and we harbor it until the next fight. And then the next fight, we blow up again, we feel better until the next one. And it just creates this cycle that we really don't even know how we got into because it all started with love and care and compassion and connection. And somewhere along the way, it gets into the other. Mm -hmm. But if we can catch on to the fact that it is a cycle and that we're not bound to that cycle, that we can choose a different approach, then we suddenly get this amazing opportunity to come at this from a different, different way. And again, we chip away at that relationships are work and we get to a point of relationships are fun. They're engaging they're my creative space to explore and not feel like I have to fight with my partner to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And being able to just say, hey, even if you're feeling a lot of all the feels, like this isn't just because, you know, we've, we've mastered the feelings and we don't feel anything. It's not like we've gone full of Vulcan here. Yes, you know? exactly. Like, or, <laughs> you know, or, <laughs> Spock, no way. Yeah. We're, what we're doing is we're saying we're, we're prioritizing the relationship over the win. Mm -hmm. And so if there is something that comes up and you feel like you need to just let go and, and, and you're just, you feel all bottled up and it's like, ah, you know, taking that moment to just say, you know what? I, I love and respect you. I don't want to fight. Um, I'm going to step away for a moment or I'm going to go collect my thoughts and I'm going to come back and let's just talk because there is something I want to bring forward that, you know, needs to be addressed. And I'd like to do it in a way that is in alignment with, with us, which is love. Yes. And that in and of itself can solve so many issues just by having direction over your feelings and saying, no, I'm not going to let them take over me. And I'm not going to then let that as a byproduct, you know, fuel an, an unhealthy aspect of a relationship, which then could create a much bigger, bigger problem down the line. You know, I mean, 
how most relationships, I would say, I think it's a fair thought that most of them start really, really well. I don't think a lot of people go into, you know, especially marriages saying, oh yes, I'm going to get divorced. I can't wait. Yeah. You know, it's can't like, can't wait no. to divorce day. <laughs> exactly. No, it's like you go in because there is love, because there is, you know, all these beautiful things that we all want to experience and share and connect with. And you feel that with the other person. Well, that can be maintained. That can be the vast majority and when you do have these other feelings, they don't have to chip away and knock down the other thing and then become the majority. Because what happens is, is people allow that and then, you know, you don't want to spend time with that person anymore. You get, you know, you feel resentment and you've lost that care. You've lost that love. You've lost that connection. And that's sad because the, because the true, the true essence of what was there could have been potentially uh, curated in a different way. And, and, you know, I'm not, I'm going to, there are some times where there are relationships where there is a, a lot of love and amazing love and there, and it's beautiful and it's palpable and it's incredible. And maybe they're just not a fit and that's okay. Maybe they're just not compatible. It doesn't mean that they fought all the time. Doesn't, you know, they could be very amicable. They could be even best friends, but for some reason it just doesn't necessarily flow. And that's okay. And that's, you know, and these are, you know, we're talking about outliers here, but I want to be able to address every, every aspect as much as I can. Yes. And that's the thing with all of our podcasts and the tools that we give, right? We have to speak to one, our own experience, because that's truly the, the space where we have the most awareness mm -hmm. Then we can speak from knowledge that we've gained along the way through interactions with others, but it's not going to be a fit for everyone. Yeah. It is going to be information that we really believe is valuable. And if it's valuable to those who are receiving it, great, take it, make it your own in the way that best suits your connection and your relationship. It's beautiful. It's so important to do that. Absolutely. And that's what we do, you know, with, we, it's not like we're sitting here with all the answers. Like we are constantly yeah. searching and understanding from tons of different people, books, other podcasts. I mean, you know, and we're doing our best to synthesize what works best for us. And, and that's really a key aspect of it. You know, it's what, you know, if your goal is to have less fights or even a relationship with no fights, you have to first believe that that's possible. Right. And then you also have to understand, okay, well then what, what can I do to make sure that happens? And then how can I understand my partner so much to where I can recognize when things are bubbling up to have that conversation before it starts to tip over, you know, and then also what tools can I, can I gain to, to mitigate as much miscommunication as possible? So there are factors here that, that, you know, are very logical that we can implement to help us manage our emotions, which are often illogical, you know, and, and, and that's how we find balance. And most importantly, like I said, we prioritize the love, we prioritize the relationship, we prioritize our, each other, and we prioritize the respect that we have for each other. That is above all. And so nothing that we're fighting about is more valuable than that which we have together. Agreed. I do remember the first time that I stepped away from you when my emotions got triggered yeah. and I didn't desire to fight. Mm -hmm. And that was at a friend, probably more of a friendship point than anything. So this does apply yeah. regardless of the connection, whether it be romantic or otherwise. But my desire was not to make my triggered emotions yours to carry. I was not in a space to communicate with you at the moment, so I walked away. And that triggered you at that moment because you have all of, you had all of this at the time unprocessed emotion around abandonment. And so I walked away needing to process my emotion before I re-engaged so we didn't cr have a fight, which would have gotten neither of us anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Rarely does that ever advance the relationship or the point. Mm -hmm. 
that you're attempting to make. So I stepped away, went into the room, did some breathing to let that emotion and all the physiological stuff that comes with that, you know, when you almost viscerally feel your blood boil or you get that pit in your stomach or any of the other things that come along with it, you don't think clearly, let alone feel clearly. And my desire was to be connected to you and feel your intention, not my emotional reaction based on what it triggered. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't communicate that effectively. So I walked out to gather myself. And when I came back, you were a hot mess (laughs) because you felt like I had abandoned you, which I could understand. So when we talk about there being layers to this and there being layers to even getting to that next level, once we got to a point where we had been able to discuss it, not fight, but discuss because we both had balanced our emotions well enough, you informed me, hey, your actions without communication caused me to feel abandoned. And I was able to explain, well, this part of the communication triggered this feeling that then brought forward a very strong emotion, all tied to the past, had nothing to do with you. So I didn't desire to lay it on your lap in the middle of our deep discussion. So I stepped away. But now the next step is me growing enough that I can communicate that to you real time. And your next step is understanding that I just need a moment so that I don't then dump all of my emotions real time on you, which wouldn't propel the conversation forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's such a good tool right there is just talking through. I mean, how many, how many people take the time to talk through their approaches? Everyone has disagreements differently. Mm -hmm. and we all have different triggers. We all have different ways of approaching disagreement because it's uncomfortable, right? There's not one way to do it. And so there's no way you could know that in that moment, that's how I was going to feel. And there's no way I could know that that's how you process. We just hadn't done that yet. And so to a degree, it was, it was a beautiful because it gave us the opportunity to start talking about it. And then as we became, uh, or in, you know, joined in our romantic partnership in that sense, then we really took the time to like deeply understand, okay, well, when I, when I'm feeling anger, this is, this, this is what I go through, or this is what I experience. And this is, and then you, you know, we both kind of go through each other and say, okay, well, now that you've, we've shared how we feel on the inside and here's what it looks like on the outside, because we don't know what we look like on the outside of ourselves. And oftentimes it's way different than we anticipate. Yeah. Or it's, you know, it's like, whoa, I, I would never have thought that that's how it comes off. And it may come off in a certain way only because of the way that, you know, the other person experienced life prior to you and to someone else it might not have. So, it, you know, it's very complicated. Yeah. It's very complicated. And there's, so the best thing you can do here is, is prioritize the most important thing again, which is the relationship and, and then say love. in love and just allow your allow things to just say you know if it's going to get to that point to fight you know does it need to be you know can you just let go of of that need to unleash on someone or you know it can you have the restraint through respect to be able to know that no matter what is going on i desire to treat the person that i love the most the best Yes. And if you do need to have that outlet, is it possible to walk away Mm -hmm. so that it doesn't happen at the person Mm -hmm. that you cherish? Yeah. Could you scream at a pillow? You know, that pillow is going to be fine the next, well, maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) Depending. (laughs) Because I also have a technique where if I'm really feeling frustrated and I need to viscerally, like from a physical standpoint, get that out of my body, You know, you can take a pillow and a tennis racket and just go to town on that thing. Mm -hmm. 
and then come back out. And at least the physical anxiousness that occurs has been released. And then you also kind of feel goofy afterwards. So it's kind of easier to have a, a little lighter heart because you're thinking, okay, I just beat the crap out of a pillow with a tennis racket. <laughs> How do I take much seriously after this? But it's much easier to re-engage. Walk away if you need to walk away. From experience, communicate <laughs> why you're walking away in a very kind and loving way, not you're making me mad, I'm walking away, mm -hmm. because that might just propel more of a fight forward. But instead, I have feelings that I need to navigate through right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a moment to pause, go navigate through them, and then come back so we can finish our discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, when things are in the heat of the moment and, and you're feeling that you may not be able to, uh, express it in that eloquently, you know, um, <laughs> maybe, not, yeah. maybe not. And so even just having little things like, Hey, I need to go process. Like even, even if it's just, so, you know, like think of words or sayings or, you even know, gestures just, yeah. Or it could just be like, Hey, I need a moment. Mm -hmm. Like it could be that simple. Like, what are things that you guys can go through and talk through so you have awareness so that when it comes up, it's letting the, it's communicating to the other person what's going on. And then it isn't escalating into something more. It gives space for both people. And like, I didn't process that way, but after seeing the way that you process, I started doing that. I'm like, oh, in some situations, this is actually really helpful. I had no idea. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it can be beneficial in a lot of ways. And so this is another tool to not allow it to escalate and to prioritize that love and that connection first. Uh, and then utilize the tools to, to support the com a, a better conversation. I, and the reason why I'm, I'm saying this, cause I hear the term like, Oh, well you could have healthy fights. And it's like, well, well, what is that? You know, I mean, is that not just a quality discussion? Mm -hmm. You know, or why do we need to make it a healthy fight? Why does it need to be a fight? It doesn't need to get, to me, that's a level of escalation where, you know, you're, there's not like positive fighting, you know, that's not like to a degree, like by putting in the word fighting, you're, you're putting in an energy that at least for me, and I know you feel the same, like we don't desire that energy in our relationship. Yeah. You know, we, we, you know, at the low end, we're looking at, you know, disagreement, you know, because we're not viewing it as a negative. There are levels of disagreement where it's like, hey, I just don't, dis you know, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't change how we feel about each other or, you know, the way that we react to each other. We, we still respond to each other with kindness and love and care and respect. And then we seek to understand, you know, well, what is it? You know, why, why are you, what's going on? And most of the time we realize, hey, you know, a vast majority, like 80 or 90% of what we think is actually far more aligned than just the comment that we said, you know, the comment, a lot of comments are just kind of off the cuff yeah. and a little bit more uh, definitive than the reality. And so when you take the time to dissect it and understand and talk through it, then you can recognize, oh, wow, there's like so much that we believe that is the same. And there's only like maybe 5% that's a little bit different. But if you didn't take that time to understand, then it would feel like that's hundred percent is different. Yeah. And you touched on that whole thing was yes, yes, yes. But in that you touched on some fundamental differences between fighting and disagreeing, or even if we go a level further, just discussion to get to a resolution. If you are not aligned. If you can go a little bit deeper into that, because there are a lot of individuals that feel like a disagreement is a fight. Why is it different for you? What makes that different for you outside of just the energy of the word? There's, there's to me a little bit more behind what I feel too when we talk about fight versus discussion versus agree to disagree. So can you share like from your perspective, what are those fundamental differences? Yeah, that's a great question. I say first and foremost for me, um, 
fighting to me stems from a need to win. And so there's an ego yes. trip there. And so if you don't need to win, then there's really not necessarily a need to fight. There's uh, you can pull back and have an understanding of like where it's a simultaneous experience. So fighting is saying that only one thing exists where the other does not. And so to me, that's again, that's, that's a one way street, not a collaboration. A disagreement to me is a collaboration. That means that both ideas or ideologies or whatever the belief, whatever we're talking about can simultaneously exist without one having to beat the other. And therefore one of us needing to lose and the other needing to win as a byproduct, right? And so that to me is a core aspect of the difference between a disagreement and a fight. And so if we release that need to, to win or to have an ego trip so that I can feel better, like I'm right, um, by releasing that, it's the need to fight really falls away in a lot of situations. You know, then, then if you are fighting, maybe it's in, um, you know, it's, it's maybe in defense in terms of like an actual, like the physical altercation. It's not necessarily in a, in a vocal one. Um, cause in most vocal situations, you can probably walk away, mm -hmm. which is again, another way to recognize like, Hey, I disagree, but that person really needs this win. And you know what, <laughs> what is it like? Um, I think Ke Ke Keanu Reeves was saying like, he's just like at a point in his life where like, yeah, you know what, if you're right, if, if, if you want to say that two plus two equals five, then great, then make it happen. Like if that's what you need, more power to you. And, and that's great. Or if like 12 plus seven equals fish, like perfect. You know, if that makes sense to you, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. That's fine. Like, just let it, let it be. Yeah. And so, and at some point that's, that's great. That's to me, that's, that's not a sign of weakness. That's actually a sign of strength. That's a sign of recognizing collaboration and in unity and connection in prioritizing love over an, an ego driven response. Yes. And that's likely why we have discussions and disagreements and not fights. Mm -hmm. That's my perspective of it too. Not that we've ever had this discussion before. <laughs> But fight to me does represent that one person comes out ahead of the other in some way. And in a fight, truly, from my perspective, no one comes out ahead. Because rarely do they have that discussion where both parties walk away with new information. And in the Keanu Reeves comment, you know, it's so perfect. Because if you told me two plus two equals fish, if I'm coming at it from, I may not agree with you on that based on what I know to be true, but now I'm curious. <laughs> I am so curious. I want to understand how in your experience does two plus two equal fish? And through that, I might learn something new. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I mean, that's a lot of miscommunications are are a lack of curiosity. And you brought that up beautifully in the last podcast about open and, and honest communication, right? Um, is, is a great way is, is curiosity. Well, curiosity stems from love and creativity, which stems from heart. And so when you can really view from that perspective, it kind of drops this need, this is perceived, this perceived need to win, which to me roots in a perceived view of separation, this illusion of separation. Yeah. If you was a true understanding and a deep connection into unity and in oneness and in collective growth, then the idea of some one person winning over another, it just doesn't even make sense. Either all you win together or you lose together. And as you just beautifully pointed out, I mean, the reality, the long-term reality, especially of fights is that everyone, everyone's losing especially when it's like a communication in, in a relationship. That's why it ends up in divorce. I mean, that's not fun. A lot of, a lot of families get in complete devastation, sadly, because of this very concept. Mm -hmm. And so, and then it, it's difficult. A lot of cycles are then repeated. Um, you know, we watched a ton of different shows talking about how, you know, their parents or their family members, you know, really they, what they saw around them. It just, 
And then they took it on and then, you know, they wanted their whole life to not be the one person. And they realized that that's who they're being to their kids or their family members and all that. And it's just, you know, at some point we have to be willing to just let go and say, I, I don't need the win. It's not about me. It's not about the idea, whatever idea it's about love. That's the most important thing here. And ultimately love always wins. <laughs> right. Yes. So when we're yeah. focused on that love, the answer. yeah, <laughs> um, I don't think they can see the whole painting, <laughs> but we do have this painting that we just got that reminds us consistently one, it has Captain America on it, which mm. awesome. love Captain America. Um, the other is love is the answer. And in truth, when we focus on the love of the connection, it's not about us winning. Mm. It's about love winning. Mm. That's how I view it anyway. Because ultimately, when we look at that connection that binds us, love is the common thread through it. And if love wins, then we win. Mm. At least I feel like I win. Mm -hmm. And I've rarely met someone who has said, no, if love wins, then we all suck. <laughs> so it would be awesome to have that as the heart of your connection and relationship. Yeah, definitely. And that's where having a, a quality disagreement is okay. Talk through it. Use your tools to step away or or stick, stick with it and talk through it. I mean, there's... there's uh, hundreds of different ways to approach it, but really taking the time to seek to understand, you know, even if it means going to your partner and walking through all the different things, like what is it, like what triggers you, you know, what, what do you feel when you, when you get anxious or angry, you know, what, this is what I see and, you know, how are you feeling when I, what, you know, how can I kind of understand what you're feeling when I'm seeing this from you? And then you know, what can we do and vice versa? And then what can we do to move through that so we don't escalate to the next level? And then being willing to do that with even your family members, your parents or your siblings or your kids, and really seek to understand. Let them feel seen, heard, and gotten. Because again, a lot of the fighting is because they don't feel seen, heard, and gotten. You know, that's what's bubbling up. Yes. And so if you can use the very thing which is instigating the root cause of the disagreement in the first place for a vast majority of things as part of the solution, then it doesn't ever need to get further. Usually a fight is a deferment of the feeling because it's not being addressed. And so it needs to escalate into something more because they feel that someone's feeling like they are not getting seen, heard, and gotten. So they need to yell or they need to be physical, you know, anything like that just to get their point across. Because mainly it's like, hey, you're not listening to me, or you're not hearing me, or you're not seeing me, or you're not understanding me. Yes. And from this sense of personal ownership, mm -hmm. how I stepped out of feeling that way too, because it is easy. If somebody isn't listening, or you feel as though they're not listening to what you're saying for any number of reasons, mm -hmm. right? There are so many reasons why people may not be open, including your partner, mm -hmm. to hearing what you're saying in that moment. But then I have to take personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not feeling seen, heard, and gotten, what choices do I have? And is yelling or creating a fight going to get me to where I desire to go? And you're right, feelings and emotions are not always logical or rational, but they don't prevent us from making logical and rational, rational choices. Yeah. So while they in themselves are not, they don't turn off our capacity to be rational in the face of the emotion mm -hmm. and to take that breath. Sometimes you just need that one breath to create that gap in between the emotion that's been triggered, the feeling it's brought forward, and how you're going to choose to respond to that. Is it going to be based on all of that emotion and feeling, or is it going to be based in that, well, let me take a moment to ask myself even from self-preservation, is the choice that I make and how I'm going to respond to this going to get me where I desire to go? Mm -hmm. And if not, 
then make the choice that is. Yeah. That's such a beautiful perspective. We often do forget about personal responsibility when we, when we talk about fighting, because it's so easy to say, well, you know, I'm fighting because I'm blaming the other person. It's the other person's fault. But, you know, whether we like it or not, we play a part in it. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, asking yourself, what am I doing to create where I'm, I'm not, you create the situation where I'm not being seen, heard and gotten. And maybe being able to bring that up in a really calm and connected way might actually get you there a lot better than just yelling at it. Yeah. Because that's all that's going to be. It's going to be the reaction. It's going to be the focus. It's no longer going to be the connection. And so, you're again, you're just deferring what you desire to experience, what you truly desire to experience, which is to be loved. Right. And we're not claiming that we're perfect and that we've never yelled because emotions do get the better of any human being. And it's very easy then to have a reaction where we yell. But when you're in a conscious, connected relationship, if I yell at you for some unknown reason, you're planted firmly enough to not yell back and vice versa. We have the opportunity to always think that the other person has our back, right? Remember that we have positive intent. And so if the person is having a moment and they have a reaction, that we don't hold that as, well, this is where we're at now in our relationship. I guess we're going to go this way. Instead, you or I, whomever is not yelling, can choose to not yell and hold that commitment that we have to each other to just not fight, to discuss, which then opens up a plethora. So if you're yelling at me and I'm like, whoa, wait a second, this isn't how he usually responds to me. So he's reacting. Now I can take it personally and I can start yelling back or I can believe in the connection that we have, know that there must be something else going on. And that now would not be the time to go, well, honey, what's going on? Can you talk me through it? If you're yelling, you're likely not in the position to talk me through what's going on. But you likely are in a place where if I said, okay, I need a moment right now and I will come back in about five minutes. Even if I didn't need the moment, mm -hmm. I could tell you did. Mm -hmm. And that will give both of us space enough to breathe through and feel through and come back at it from a different, different space versus escalate. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great one that, you know, in terms of raising voice, you know, versus like actually like yelling, yelling and, you know, there's, there's different levels of, of different fighting, but mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, just when it comes to just holding the space and not, not meeting them where they're at, like, cause that's an easy one. It's like someone starts yelling and it's like, you know, then just matching it, you know, yeah. um, is it's it's a redirection it's uh it's a pattern interrupt in a lot of ways you know if someone is raising their voice and then it's met with something calm it's like you know it's like oh yeah why why, why am i raising my voice you know and i don't i don't need to do that we can just talk through it and so you know it's we're all going to feel emotions things are going to occur and it's not like we may have not gone into that moment wanting to raise our voice Sometimes it just kind of happens. And then as you're doing it, you're like, oh, this is happening, you know? And so that's where that space that we can hold for each other is so sacred and real and loving. And that's why we say prioritizing the love first. Yeah. And assuming positive intent. Yes. Although, again, for me, assume is a really <laughs> challenging word. But, you know, again, agreeing to disagree, right? <laughs> yes. 
And if you found these tips helpful and you find the tips that we provide on the Heart Leader podcast helpful, there are a couple of things that you can do to continue to dive deep into that inner space and have more tools at your disposal. Put them right there in that personal toolkit. One is to continue to explore right here on the Heart Leader podcast. We have lots of episodes, lots of clips, shorts, things that you can get to that will allow you to find a lot of tools that we've utilized both for ourselves, with each other, and with clients alike. So feel free to explore. Another is to hop on over to Silence Your Inner Critic. Dot com. There is a link below in the description and a lot of tools and resources will be available in that book when it hits shelves on March 4th. But if you sign up and get on the wait list, you'll be notified all along and you'll get access to 13 tips right out of the gate from the book. So it makes it easy to get a jump start until the book gets delivered into your hands. Until next time, I look forward to chatting with you right here in our Heart Leader community. 